What up, winger? Can you hear me? What up, Steve? What's going on, man? Uh, you guys can hear me, right? So much delay. What up, Josh? Sweet. Cool. Awesome. Well, what's up, guys? Uh, I'm pretty stoked. I have this this here knife that uh, that I'm gonna open. Uh, been waiting for a lot of knives to come in, and. Uh, they're starting to roll in, so I'm pretty excited. I'm just going to wait. Give people a moment to join. Looks like we've got like seven. We'll see if we can get, I don't know, 10 or 15 people. Don't want to uh, spoil the fun too early. Some of you know uh, who this knife came from. Don't spoil it in the chat. It should be fun. It is uh, a knife maker who refers to himself as an amateur knife maker on his Instagram. So we'll see. Uh, anybody that uh, hangs out around here knows that I like to introduce newer makers to the internet, I suppose. And uh, usually that's of the South African variety. But in this case, it's not. Uh, this knife comes from Florida. So it should be fun. Let's see here. It takes uh, quite a bit of setup to make all this come together. Also, Steve, I don't know if you notice, but that little one X is still in the corner. Uh, the app that I got to like make the camera full screen doesn't work with the software that's on the computer that lets me stream the phone to the computer. It's a nightmare. Um, Oh, also, my hair's a mess. I did uh, did mean to have this hat available for myself. Um, let's see here. What do we got? What's in the box? Uh, hello, St. Jude. Josh, you're right. It's a field cleaver. It is a Rad Knives field cleaver. I paid $477 million for it. Because, I mean, it's just so obvious that Radmascus is worth that amount of money. I, I just, it's a little bit more than I've ever invested in a knife before. But, um, yeah, I just, I couldn't live without it. I really couldn't. Peak concurrent, we are at 10 peeps. So many makers in Florida. Yeah, Winger, uh, you're not wrong. You've got Michael Gavick and... Uh, that Luma Blades guy, I don't know his name. Uh, and then presumably you have the Barajas brothers in addition to, well, shoot, I'm spoiling the maker actually right now. Whoops. So, but that's three more guys. Um, so that's five. I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think of who else, uh, who else is down there. But, uh, well, Jason is down there, right, Winger? Uh, that's where Jason from Larebo Knives is, which... Those should be the next knives coming in. He said he dropped them off in the mail last night. So, what's say Thursday. I should get them on Saturday. 
which will be really exciting. I'll probably do another live stream then. Um, the whole live stream thing is pretty fun. So let's see here. I'm ready to bust this open. I don't know if you guys can imagine like how much restraint it takes to like sit next to this closed box uh, with this custom that I've been waiting for uh, for like four hours to wait for this to start. But I wanted to give everybody a chance to like plan on it if they wanted to be here. Uh, so let's go ahead and open it up. We'll rip it open because um, I have a bunch of other extra stuff too. Like if you guys want to – yeah, Jason, right. Um, if you guys want to keep hanging out and stuff, I have other things to show you as well. So there is uh, also this Wii knife. Uh, this is 717. Won this in a raffle. And, you know, this video is not sponsored, but it might as well be sponsored by Wii. You can see uh, I've got their hat and – their knife is going to be what opens this package. So let's just go ahead and do it. Do the thing. Oh, that was very loud. I apologize. Da, da, da. See if I can do this on the camera. These boxes are always just kind of annoying. All right. Let's see here. What do we got? Cool. Got ourselves a little uh, naff taco. Crazy delay. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, I think you can choose how much delay there is. And I picked like uh, the standard amount. It's probably like 30 seconds. Um, okay, let's just go ahead and do it, right? So I... Uh, don't really know what this knife looks like because all the videos on Instagram, the videos that I've gotten, they were usually in like low light. So like, I mean, I know what it looks like, but I haven't seen uh, sort of how well it's finished. Um, so let's just go ahead and knock this one out. So this knife is coming to me from Will Calazzo, Calazzo Knives. He is sort of the understudy, if you will, of uh the barajas brothers which would be shark knife co and vi knives uh both of whom make delightful knives that i absolutely love um i've always really enjoyed looking at their knives online and when i went to new york custom knife show i got to handle them and was just absolutely blown away uh and so you know me being more of like a budget guy especially when shark knife co's knives that i'm interested in cost anywhere between three and six thousand dollars uh you know i was interested in trying something um, from somebody who has a similar style, but is a little bit more affordable. So let's check it out. This is going to be the mini Bushido first run. Let's see here. Make sure I'm on camera. Uh, first run Damascus Thai carbon fiber date January 2nd. So this knife is 16 days old. Let's check it out. Wow. Okay, so the first thing that I'm noticing is that um, there's some orange in the Timascus. Am I out of focus there? Uh, some orange here and some white here. So it's almost like it's like a high heat to low heat fade. Um, you know, I obviously prefer – it's very well finished. It's incredibly smooth. Uh, I very much prefer to – uh, exclude the orange colors so uh, I might you know send this out and get this flame by somebody or send it back to Will uh, another first thing that I notice is that the knife is incredibly smooth like this carbon fiber is uh, just insanely comfortable and soft all the edges feel broken maybe a little bit sharp um, kind of in the way that the Herukis Blumenaris knives are sharp but uh, a little bit more broken than that definitely broken up here really like this pivot uh, if you guys can see here, the pivot's completely flush. Uh, he's, he's, I don't know, I'm assuming ground the uh, scale of the knife down with the pivot inside uh, or otherwise formed it to uh, be completely flush even though there's a curve here, which is quite interesting. Um, obviously, Quake and Style Blade, I, this was the main thing that drew me to the knife. Sorry, I know I keep looking to the right because I'm trying to make sure I'm in frame. Uh, I absolutely love Quake and Style Blades. The fact that this blade is just completely flush with the front of the frame. Uh, so 
Let's see, we've also got the floating Timascus backspacer. Uh, see if I can get that in focus here. There we go. Nice little floating Timascus backspacer. A little bit of jimping on the flipper tab. Let's go ahead and see how she flips. Oh, very nice. Very nice. So we do have a uh, Damascus Tonto with a very intense hollow grind and a fully ground tip. So gorgeous. Oh my goodness. And one thing that I really like about this that you'll notice, let me see if I can put this down flat. So you'll notice that the, here, let me get a white background for you because I really want you to be able to see this. So my problem with certain Quaken style knives is that they have that sort of arched back look. Um, that's something I'm like really not a fan of. You see that on the, the Hoback knives. Um, well, specifically the uh, Quaken, the Hoback Quaken, whatever it's called. Um, you see that on like the Burn, the Lucas Burnley Quakens, the Boker Quakens by extension. Um, and so you, I really hate that arched back. Even there are certain knives too where it's just completely flat across, but because of the shape of the knife in the belly, uh, it just appears to be curved. But you can see here that uh, there's sort of like a, here, let me see if I can show this, like a forward slope. And then the blade kind of is like this, but the tip of the blade is still below the uh, center point on the knife. And so it's a Quaken style blade that, uh, or sorry, a Quaken style knife rather, um, that I'm comfortable with looking at from a side profile, which is everything I've been waiting for and asking for in knifedom ever since I started collecting because the Quiback, thank you, Steve, um, because, you know, I've had the Bokers and stuff and the, and the Lucas Burnley stuff and, uh, just looking at it from a side profile always really irked me and I've really been a sucker for Quaken style blades forever. So, um, this was like a perfect mix. So I'm like really happy, uh, looking at this knife with it so far. The ergonomics feel completely great. Uh, super smooth in the hand, a little bit small, but it is the mini Bushido after all. And that's exactly what I was going for. Um, I sort of imagined that it would be similar to the, uh, a, a squared a six mini, but you can see it's a little bit bigger. Um, and so it's still got, I think, a normal sized knife feel to it, whereas like something like the mini, where it's been a downsized shape, uh, doesn't feel super great in terms of the saber grip. Uh, let's go ahead and get these silly napkins out of here. Now, the one thing that I need to test really is the action. Oh, wow. <laughs> Incredibly smooth, uh, particularly for Damascus. Um, and I don't know if you guys can hear that clicking sound that it makes when it, uh, comes to a halt, but wow. This knife has some of the best acoustics I've ever heard. Oh man, I could not be happier with this knife. This is amazing. Okay, so... I'm really glad that uh, you guys have sort of seen me take the knife out now because um, I have to tell a story now about this knife. So my friends that uh, some of them are here, we've got uh, Winger and uh, we've got um, Josh is in the in the house, I think, as well. Dealing with Will and getting this knife was a little bit difficult. He was very polite, um, and and I don't want to make it sound like he's like a bad guy or anything. He's not. Uh, these guys are busy, and when the main way that they talk is Instagram, um, you know, it, things get lost, right? I live my life by setting reminders on my phone to do stuff, and if I forget to set a reminder in my iPhone, I probably won't do that thing. And people who don't do that at all, I can't imagine how they remember to do anything. So I had a lot of difficulty getting a video from him because what I told him was, you know, hey, uh, I'm really interested in these mini Bushidos. 
but like I'm very picky about an action and like frankly I don't want to buy it if it's not going to have sort of a free dropping blade and he was like well what do you mean so I sent him a picture of a or sorry a video of a shamwari uh, the one that I had on loan and he was like oh yeah no problem that's that I can totally do that uh, it's got a thick blade stock it'll be fine so I was like okay cool sounds great um but you know routinely I, I was like okay well I really want to see a video so that you know I can know whether or not I'm going to move forward with this knife and give you this money. So he's like, oh, yeah, just pay me. Uh, you know, I'll get the video to you later today. So I'm like, cool. I PayPal'd him all the money um, still without having seen it. And then he went on like a six-day vacation, which is fine. Like that was planned before I sent him the money. So it is what it is. But um, among that, like he just wasn't sending the video, wasn't sending the video, almost mailed out a knife without me sending the video. And so I just started to get a little bit nervous. You know, it says that he's new to knife making. Um, he's, he's a little bit difficult to get this like video out of. And so it just, because I don't know him, it seemed a little shady. Um, you know, I've had other interactions with other makers who I'm like a lot more familiar with that I've met in person, uh, who have maybe done the same thing to me. And it's more just like, all right, dude, you know, but like, I know the person, so I know I'm not getting screwed. Whereas I don't know Will, so it's just a little nerve wracking, but, um, finally I get this video at like 4:30 in the morning and it's like not a good action. Like the knife is clearly not falling at all. And I was like, Hey man, like I'm not interested in that. You know, maybe if you think tinkering can be better, uh, I'll be, I'll be interested or just give me a refund. So he's like, no, no, no. I have another one at the shop. Let me go show you that one. So I wait all day, all day. Uh, and then finally he sends me a video and it's this knife. And I mean, it, it shuts just like it's shutting right now. And I was like, wow, that looks absolutely fantastic. Like I will hundred percent take that knife. Uh, so he mailed it and here it is. So I'm super pumped because guys, I was so worried that like, it was just not going to be what I wanted or uh, I was just so concerned. I was so concerned and like buying knives from newer makers is always a little bit risky. Uh, a lot of times it's easier with the South, a South Africans cause I'm paying like four to 600 bucks for a knife. This knife was a thousand. So it was a big leap for me in terms of buying something from someone I don't know. I've never tried their product at a show. I've never really talked to them before trying to get the knife. Um, but it was just so perfect to me, uh, perfect for me in terms of design and filled such a perfect niche in my collection. I was like, I have to have this thing. So the fact that I'm satisfied with it, that uh, all the finishing work is absolutely fantastic. The action's exactly what I expected and hoped for. The acoustics are way better than I ever could have imagined. The flush pivot that he's done here is incredibly unique and special. Um, the blade is, in, is perfectly centered, as you guys can see. Uh, we have these insane tolerances uh, with a huge thick blade, and it's all perfect. Um, the flipper tab is super comfortable. It feels great uh, and just... God, I'm so, so happy. Um, okay, guys, that's enough of me gushing about the knife. Let's uh, let's go ahead and see what you guys have to say. I, I have some other interesting things to show you guys. I have this um, Koenig Arius on loan from my boy Josh. Let's get this crap out of the way. Um... Last time I did the stream that was a little bit hidden because it was more of a test, I said that I had this other tie bolt. I wanted to show you guys I do have this zirconium tip now and the matching frag pattern cap spin. Wait for it to get in focus. Um, and the zirconium matches the zirconium and the black tie mask is clip. And the frag pattern cap spin matches the frag pattern pen. So very happy with this piece. It's super sweet. Koenig Arius. Uh, this knife is... Just leave it there, dude. Like this knife? Um, oh, leave the... you talking about the A6? My bad. Um, so the Arius, very interesting knife. Uh, I have to say, if you've tried a Shirogorov F95 or 95R, um, that's basically what it is. It's, you know, obviously more contoured than that. It's a different shape. Uh, you have the different opening mechanisms, being able to use your thumb, which I struggle with, but I did get it on video on Instagram. You can middle finger flick, which you're not going to be doing with those sheer Gorovs. But uh, in terms of the way that it feels in the hand, the size, uh, the the strength of the detent, the way that it drops, um, you know, it's uh, it's basically a sheer Gorov 95, which is a good thing. Uh, let's see. My only concern would be the grind. Hollow or not, 
Half of that is flat. Gorgeous ninth, though. Love the tolerances. So slide, yes, you're absolutely right. And I recognized from the get-go that this was going to not be a knife that gets used. And the the super thick blade with like the flat quaking across that's a uh that's a very sort of shark knife co vi knives feature um that's sort of like a standout feature of their knives uh i really like that i just think that it looks absolutely fantastic uh, you're absolutely correct it it will it will make it a less functional knife um this is something that you can essentially never use for food prep um you know, it's going to open packages great, right? It's got a nice Tonto tip, which I love. I know a lot of people aren't fans of Tontos, but I am uh, because they're great for opening packages. And so it's going to do all the EVC tasks that I need it to do. But you're right. Uh, you couldn't – this would not be useful to, like, eat an apple with or do a whole lot. But mostly what I'm doing is, like, cutting string off of a T-shirt or opening a package or that's it. I'm not even going to be breaking down boxes. Um is that Arius from OJ? Who's OJ? It's from Josh. Uh, Echo does knives. Um, let's see. What else do I have here? So I have this JG Scout. Uh, this is from Dieter Peter on Reddit. Which, by the way, if you're a Redditor, we just launched r slash Grail Knives. Super stoked. Today is the grand opening. Head on down to uh, your local subreddit and post some cool Grail Knives. Get some conversation started. That'll be great. Excuse me. Um, so, yeah, I have this JG Scout. A little bit smaller than the Ranger. Definitely a little bit more what I have in mind in terms of size. You can see... The Bushido next to that. Uh, pretty similar. Really liking these mini knives, guys. Uh, one thing that I will say about the Arius, and this will come up in my um, in my review, is that if Koenig ever makes a mini Arius, I will be all over it. Um, I would say the only mini version of a knife that I've never liked uh, is... And the Neon is not a small version of a 95, but it basically is. They're completely different knives, but it's basically fills that niche for Shiro, uh, and I don't like the the Neon, but I basically like the mini version of every other knife these days. Um, you, I'm trying to find a custom mini bodega. Uh, I didn't know those existed, and then I saw one recently. It was out of my price range, but um, if any of you know where I can find an affordable custom, not the Steelcraft, like actual Todd Bag mini bodega full tie, that would be fucking awesome. Um but yeah, I would love a mini Arius. And so this Scout I have here, just because I was doing some uh, spa treatment for it for Dieter Peter while I was on the way to a new owner. Uh, you can see here I've got it drop and shut, nice and clean, super ultra smooth. I really like these knives. Uh, JG makes a great knife. JG is Jason Guthrie, for those of you who might not know. So what's up, guys? Do you guys have any questions or anything? Um, I just, uh, I had couple things to show you. Really excited about this Bushido. Uh, next things to come up on the list are going to be, uh, like I said, Saturday, uh, Larevo Knives, Jason Overall. He should be, uh, I have uh, Latteris number 001, which is his new model. Um, and that will be arriving as well as my mini Tribeca is coming back from a spa treatment. Uh, he did a lot to polish up the scales. I'm very excited for that. And he said that he got the action functioning much better, which is sweet. Um, interestingly, I found out that the mini Tribeca that I bought at Blade Show is actually the first mini Tribeca ever. So now, uh, my friend Winger has Tribeca number 001 and I have mini Tribeca and Latteris number 001. So, uh, big fan of the, uh, first editions from Larevo Knives, apparently. Uh, so very excited for that. He also has my face in, which is a prototype. Um, and he's going to be repairing that over the next, uh, yeah, I know I'm not the only person who wants a small Arius. There, uh, we should we should poke him for that. We should go poke Mister Mister Koenig or or whatever his name is. I actually watched an interview with him. He looks like a pretty cool dude. He's young. Uh, a lot of these guys are young now, though. Um, what was I talking about before? Larevo knives coming Saturday. Uh, Holt Blade Works. I'm sure you guys are stoked for yours if you don't already have them. Um, that should be mailed. They told me no later than Monday. Uh, I've been told by a little birdie 
uh, that it has completely knocked his Rask out of his pocket. Um, I'm pretty convinced that unless something goes particularly awry, that uh, Mr. Holt at the $495 price point is going to be the next Grimsmo. And the fact that he is in North America only serves to help him. Um, he's got something new that's brewing. I know he does, but I don't want a new model. I want a tiny Arius. Or at the very least... I want a small knife from him that is equally as fantastic. Um, but I really like the Arius design. I just want it to be this big. Um, so the whole Bladeworks knife will be arriving. Uh, one of my good friends had his arrive, but he just had a baby boy yesterday, so he's a little preoccupied. Um, what else is coming? There's like another... What else did I order? The Bushido... The Larevos, the Holt. Oh, I did win a uh, Herukis Blumeris LL15 in a raffle, which is dope. But the thing is in rough shape. So I don't know if I'm going to uh, see about maybe if I can spend 50 bucks and mail it to Herukis now uh, over in South Africa. Maybe I can pick it up from him at Blade Show. That's basically what I'm thinking. The blade has like chips in it or something. It's bad. It looks bad. Um, it's like off center. Some of the things I might be able to fix, but like I can't fix the blade. The blade's like damaged. Um, so we'll see. I'll play around with that when I get it and we'll see how bad it is. Holt books are going to open again soon. Yeah, I think they are open. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're open. I announced it on Reddit yesterday when they announced it on Instagram. I announced it for them. Um, I'm pretty sure the books are open. So let's see. What do we got here? Um, I don't even know how to see, like, how many people... Did I miss any questions, first off? Um, I don't know how to check how many people are actually watching. So, like, I want, are you guys, like, here? Do you guys want to hang out? Gold, late gold, my gold. Thank you for reminding me, Josh. Yes, I completely forgot. I knew there was another one. I'm like, I know I bought four knives. What is the fourth knife? I was panicking. Yes, my JD Van Deventer gold, uh, first run of 30. So pumped for that. So, if you guys have seen on Tri City Customs, the prototype that he had at New York Custom Knife Show is G10 with all the beautiful, um, uh, beautiful milling and everything and these uh, white Timascus pivot collar and uh, uh, clip and so we're doing the same build excuse me we're doing the same build but we're just doing carbon fiber and we're going to finish it in the same texture that the Kenpachi that I had was so I'm so pumped for that knife that should be delivered sometime around the end of this month early February uh, okay, so gotta ask, why no love for the Shiro Neon? Nick was kind of down on it too, but as an owner of a lot of Shiro's, and for example, a Rask, I find the Neon to be a wonderful smaller knife. So, the reason that I'm not a fan of the Neon is for is for pet peeve personal reasons. So, it's kind of like an unfair... I don't know how Nick approached it. Um, I have a video up on the Neon Light and the Neon Ultralight. Uh, essentially the same knife. But, um, I don't like it. One... It's too small, and by that, I don't mean the overall size, but it's too thin. I really dislike thin knives. So if you can tell, like, these, right, like, I don't own these, but, like, my knives are thick, right? Like, I like thick liner locks. And, like, the thing is, the thickest knives that I own aren't here on the table. They're my Larevos. They're, like fucking more than an inch thick they're insane uh and i love that i like thick knives you can see even the Wii 717 even though i won it in a raffle i do very much like how chunky it is so oh it's not even on screen i got key forgetting i'm like blocking myself so uh, i like really thick knives the neon is super super slim like too slim and it's honestly the reason i need to make a video about this soon so i'm starting to find that i have like this like really big bias against frame locks and it's not – it's for two reasons. One, because frame locks tend to be much thinner than liner locks. There's just less material needed. 
Uh, and two, because the frame, uh, the lock bar, this makes the whole contouring of the handle uneven. Like you can rub your finger here. And so when you're gripping the knife, you can kind of feel that. And on certain knives, it digs into you a little bit more than others. But um, it just makes it feel asymmetrical to me. And I really don't like that. I, I don't like asymmetry. I'm a little OCD about that. So I'm finding that frame locks in general don't do it for me. And then the neon is sort of like the pinnacle of those pet peeves that I have, right? It's not just thin. It's incredibly thin. It's not just, um, you know, a frame lock. It's like this really tiny frame lock. It's like a toothpick. I don't know. I just... It just didn't do it for me. Uh, feel free to watch the videos uh, to hear what I really had to say because it's been a long time since I've had one in hand. I've played with like four of them now, uh, and it's never done it for me. They have fantastic actions, but I hate tiny little uh, rounded off flipper tabs too. You know, you got to just, eh, with the knife. You know, it's like a little stupid thing. I just don't like it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just don't. Um, uh I just like bigger knives is really what it boils down to. And even if it's a super small knife like the A6 Mini, it has to be thick. Uh, let's see. Millet Torrent. Ugh. So I try not to be really negative when I don't have anything redeeming to say. So like if I make a video on a knife or like a company or something uh, – you know, if I'm going to be harsh on them, if I'm going to be like, this is bad, this is bad, this is bad, I want to have redeeming qualities because I don't like just coming on and just being negative and just being – and just spitting vitriol. I think there's enough of that in the world. I don't need to waste my time doing it. Um, in the case of Millet, I have nothing nice to say uh, about them as a company, about the work that they've produced. Um, so I'm just not going to say it. Uh, I'm happy to talk about it in private. Uh, my friends know exactly how I feel about them. Um but they have done some shitty shit, and I'm just not a fan. So uh, feel free to email me, tavarshworks at gmail.com, if you want to find out why. Uh, my neon would come open in the pocket, cut the shit out of me once. Oh, my God. Dangerous. Like, not... I, ever since I cut my hand and damaged it, um, the thought of, yeah, like, any of that, any pocket-related or knife-related injury just makes me cringe. Um, fair enough. Makes sense when you put it that way. Yeah, it's just a personal thing. That's it. You know, it's not a bad knife at all. Uh, really great little EDC. Um, really, really perfect for like, for like as a tool. Like, it, like the neon is a good little tool. Uh, but for somebody that likes to sit and flip knives, the other thing too is these frame locks with no texturing or anything. You know, I have slippery hands. I've said this a million times in videos. Live in a kind of humid area, so those little frame locks. You know, when you're holding it like this, it's slippery, and then it just doesn't. It just doesn't work for me. Um, yeah, see, I keep eating dinner right before these things and then I'm all like burpy. Something else that I have here, uh, kind of there as well with, um, with what, with the neon, uh, I don't know if you guys are like, st so like, I know the spinner craze completely died and it's pretty funny because you see all these companies that were like into it, they're getting out of it, you know? Uh, Custom Knife Factory with their Pipiaka line just created their last uh, spinner. It's like modular or something. Um, but, you know, I really like my Pipiaka 3.0. And I really liked the Pipiaka 1 or uh, 2.0 as well. Is the A2-A6 bigger than the Neon? Well, I think they're about the same exact size in terms of like overall length, but it's it's significant. It's twice as thick, uh, easily. I don't know. I don't have a neon. Um, if anybody has a neon uh, that's in the stream and they want to post the specs, like I or Google it. I just can't Google it because my keyboard's pushed away. Um, I have I have the tools. Is what I'm trying to say. Let's see. Uh, we're looking at like 6.75 inches. Okay. Somebody write this down. 6.75 inches and then, uh, it's thick as hell, man. Ow. Uh, 
And then uh, in terms of thickness, probably should close this. Uh, five point, uh, sorry, point five four inches. So, you tell me. That's about the uh, best I can offer right now since I don't have a neon. Uh, does anybody have one? Is anybody gonna be able to tell us that? I feel bad. This Bushido is cool, man. I really uh, it's too bad about the clip. I'll have to get that orange out. Uh, I might try sending that to my boy, Adam Purvis. Uh, this Damascus is like really well polished and man, you can see he's polished the detent track quite a bit. See that? So I found that on these smaller knives, they, a lot of people will say that a knife has a bad action uh, because um, the or sorry not a bad action a lot of people will say that a small blade isn't free dropping because it has a small blade that's not true there's a couple reasons why one if you have a super small blade and a super thin blade stock and you just aren't very good at making a knife then you might not have it dropping shut Two is that on these smaller knives, if you have an etch or a coating or Damascus or dam steel or literally anything other than a polished finish on your flat, then the smaller knives, the and I'm told this by makers, so I'm not making this shit up, the, they don't want to polish the track because when the knife is open you can see the track exposed and it kind of looks like shit. I don't care. I don't care. I am more than happy to look at a exposed, polished track and have it look like shit. I would much rather have it look like shit than close like shit. So thank you to Will for polishing that. That is the reason why I'm sure this one had a better action than some of the others. I mean, that's just an assumption. Maybe he polished all of them but um i'm very happy with that and uh you know i was told by jason from larevo that uh my mini tribeca didn't have a polished track because of that reason but this time around he said that he was able to do it so we'll see if it's exposed or not when it gets here but um yeah i'm okay having the exposed track uh if if that's what it means to get a good action uh point th so 7.5 overall so the neon is longer Wow, it's 0.75 inches longer? Really? Wow, that's significant. Uh, and then 0.39 inches thick. So, yeah. Uh, I was wrong. It's not quite double, but fuck, it's not far off either. Interesting. Uh, See, so you believe it's smaller aside from thickness, Gavin. Yeah, obviously not though, right? Because I said this was 6.75, right? And Steve's telling me it, we've got 7.5 on the neon. Or am I just misunderstanding your phrasing? Yeah, 6.75. Yeah, also, this uh, this Ranger is nice. I like the, Or, sorry, uh, Scout. I had a Ranger, and um, it was just too big. So I really want a Scout, actually. Echo, uh, Josh, did you say earlier you were getting on his books? Let me scroll up here. Gold, later, right. Holtz books are open. 60 spots. Good to know. Getting on his books when it opens, love the scout. So I've had a lot of friends get on his books in the past, and I've actually been offered spots on his books the last big batch, uh, the batch that was delivered sometime before New York Custom Knife Show um, with all the time ask us clips. I think it was like a run of 30. Uh, I got offered two spots on those books by people that had a spot and then, you know, had to back out. Um, and I didn't take it because at the time I was like, his knives are on washers. Mmm, I'm far too sophisticated for Teflon washers. Mm. Um, you know, as we all know, his knives are fantastic, and it, I don't really give a shit what's jammed up in his pivot because he has some of the smoothest, nicest actions out there. Um, but yeah, at the time I was like, no, I'm way above that. And uh, and then I finally got hands on that uh, Ranger, 
and was like, oh, got it. I was also given a lot of encouragement by my friend Charlie. Uh, he's a big fan. So uh, I have a buddy named Sid who was on the books for that last batch, and he has a scout with this Warren Cliff blade, but it is Galactic Bacon Damascus, which is what I have coming on my Latteris. Um, but it's all the Galactic Shooting Stars, and it looks... Actually, that's not true. I think it does have some solid lines at the top, but man, it is freaking gorgeous. It's got carbon fiber, or lightning strike carbon fiber, I don't remember. Um, but that thing is sick. So yeah, I really want one of these. You know, I don't really like micarta, but this micarta feels really good in the hand. Um, not This is not my configuration of choice. I would like a Timascus clip. Uh, I wouldn't want orange liners. If I was going to get a colored liner, I'd want it to be more of a red. This is kind of like a reddish orange. Um, I don't know. Maybe it is red. I just don't like it with the micarta, I guess. Uh, and I don't want a worn cliff. I think this worn cliff looks really good. I really like this little harpoon shape here. Um, and I, I think it's a, it's my favorite worn cliff blade on the market, hands down. But I still just don't like warnings, really. It's just a personal preference. Yeah, I meant A6 was smaller. Correct. It is smaller except for thickness. Right. Thickness, correct. Uh, sexy worn cliff gets me every time. Charlie who is who originally turned me on to them. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. Um, like I said, this is, of all the Warren Cliffs that you can choose in the world right now, this is my favorite version of it. And so uh, I think if I got my hands on a particular scout with the Warren Cliff, I would keep it and I would like it. Um, who has, it's Schmalberg or somebody on uh, Reddit has one that's just like this. It's the same config, except in the show side is Silver Strike Carbon Fiber. It is fantastic. Any sub three inch folders you like? Yep. There you go. <sighs> That's not a joke either. I fucking love the hummingbird. My review on it was glowing. Uh, legitimately though, sub three inches. Yeah. I mean, I love my A6 mini. It's sub three inches. You mean sub? You mean three inch blade, right? Sorry, I know I'm making a lot of noise. Um, this is like a two and a half, two point seven five inch blade, I think. Looks like the cutting edge. So from the tip of the scale, basically, to the tip of the knife, see there, is uh, like. Uh, it's almost three inches. It's like 2.9. So I guess if you're going to look at the cutting edge, really, it's probably a three inch. I imagine that a police officer would call this a three inch blade. So sub three inch blade knives that I like. Um, shit. I don't know. How big was the blade on that small Mako that I had? Uh, that green small Mako that crew Jones owns now. Um, the, the little Gator Gav that I had. Um, I think that was a 2.75 inch blade and I love that knife. So small, small Mako, any small Mako would be that size. Uh, anybody out there have a small Mako? You can measure your blade for me. I'm pretty sure it's 2.75 or 2.8. Um, so yeah, I would say the small Mako is probably the only knife. Uh, and then the A6 mini is really close. I, I would say an officer would call this three inch blade, but I call it a 2.8, 2.85. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I really like the Reich Knife Hummingbird. Um, if I lived in a place where you couldn't really have knives, I would still try to find a way to carry this and use it, for sure. How big is the blade on a Rat 2? Rat 2 has a cutting edge of 2.75 inches. So the Rat 2, the Rat 2 qualifies. I like the Rat 2 a lot. It's a great knife. That's sub 3 inches. Shamari is awesome for 3 inches, but that's not sub 3 inches. He asked for sub 3 inches. This knife is huge, but has a fantastic action and a really great anodization done by Ty Spectrum. Probably going to hold on to that until I find myself another custom Gavco. Um, why can't I find, like, 
the data about what's going on here. Like what happens if I go here and click this? Twelve. Cool. So there's still twelve of you. What? That's awesome. Uh, what else, guys? So yeah, I should be doing a unboxing live stream of the Lorevos. That should be fun because it's a brand new model and it's 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 a really big spa treatment on my mini Tribeca. Uh, it being the first one, Jason said he was able to make a lot of improvements on it. So uh, it should be like an entirely new knife. I mean, he refinished everything. He re-etched the blade. It's it's whole. It's entirely fresh. Everything's been buffed and cleaned, and and it should be gorgeous. So I'm really excited to break those out. Um, and then I'll probably do the whole Blade Works unboxing on stream as well, <clears throat> because uh, uh, because the whole Blade Works I think is gonna be a big deal. Like that's. I think that's going to be like a big knife and like I really want you guys to like see my actual reaction to that which again my reaction to this Bushido has been so much more positive than I expected honestly I get so worried guys um nice what's up Ryan fuck yeah thanks for joining us uh yeah I I was really scared guys I was really nervous because um it's just always a risk when you try a new maker and you've never tried their knives before and, and all that. So, you know, I have to be perfectly honest. I'm pretty hard to please. Uh, and a lot of times when I open knives, I'm not like insanely excited about it. Really. I'm, I'm not always that pumped. Um, and like, I know that a couple people know how nervous I was about this Bushido. And so the fact that it's like, literally everything I could have hoped for, except I'll need to get the clip redone, um, is awesome. I'm so happy with it. Uh, what's up, Charlie? You're joining us. Awesome. No, I actually, it's funny. I talked about you earlier, uh, when I was referencing Jason Guthrie, because, uh, you turned us on to this guy for sure. You know, I felt like I was a little bit too much of a snob, uh, when it came to finding out that he was on Teflon washers, but, uh, you uh, were able to sway me, and I got that Ranger. This is not mine. This is actually uh, on its way to a new owner from Dieter Peter. Uh, I think you actually commented in that um, thread on Reddit. You remember you guys were telling him that you just need the hex bolt on this side. You don't need this tool. I can actually see why he was having an issue. Uh, I took the hex to this side, uh, and it was free spinning, and it didn't matter how much pressure you put here. Um, it continued to free spin. So what I actually had to do was not only use the uh, five spoke tool with it and and reverse crank, um, but it it wasn't just breaking the seal of like Loctite. It was I had to like crank it all the way out. It was like oddly tight, but I got it running super smooth. You can see here, um, she's doing pretty well. And so this is uh, getting ready to head off to its new owner. Thoughts on the Canada knife bullshit? So. Yeah, that's pretty brutal, right? It's been interesting because it's obviously not something that's been either A, implemented immediately or B, implemented well because, excuse me, tons of knives have made it over the border since. Um, I've been in contact with quite a few Canadians who have had, you know, stuff just like the Thorburn or whatever, like big, big knives that clearly have... Um, you know, flipping mechanisms and stuff and, and all of that with not with tighten down pivots. Those have all made it, um, through, uh, through custom. So either it's being like sort of implemented slowly or it's being implemented poorly in the sense that maybe a lot of these guys don't know what to look for, or they're not really opening the mail in the first place. But, uh, Zangadia, for example, from Reddit says that all of his knives that he gets have the paperwork that show that, they did look at the knife, that they did open the package, and they're still all making it through. So I don't really know what to think about that. Um, it's kind of a move that follows the sort of sentiments that we're seeing out of London. Um, you know, they're trying to make tiny little pocket knives sound like scary murder weapons and shit. It's fucked up. Uh, 
you know, it's really easy to always complain about where you're at. And there are things about America that I'm not super fond of. But, boy, as a Virginian, it's pretty nice to just be able to own whatever the fuck I want to own. You know what I mean? Uh, there, There's no regulations, really. I can, I'm can i technically not allowed to own my Ultratech. Um, but no one would really give a shit, I don't think. Uh, so, that's, it's nice. Um, it'll be, it's only imports, which is interesting in terms of Canada. So, like, it shouldn't really affect anybody, right? It won't affect Kirby Lambert or the Grimsmo brothers or anybody like that. Uh, Peter Resenti's Canada, too, right? Am I, am I right about that? Um, so, it won't bother them. I don't really, I don't see an issue yet, anyway. Uh, as soon as we start seeing knives get quote unquote impounded or whatever the fuck happens, then I'll be nervous. Uh, is there a full tie version on the A6? So, uh, interesting thing about the A6, this design does come from Tashi Baruka. Um, Virginia is indeed for knife lovers. Uh, this design from Tashi is used by a lot of makers. So you can get this exact look um, in basically any size or shape or finish or materials you want. They're just not going to be from A squared knives. Uh, in terms of the A squared A6, it only comes as a liner lock uh, and a bolster lock. Those are the only two forms w in which they make it. Um, but uh, you can get the ginormous custom knife factory muscle, same design, giant frame lock, huge. I have a video up on it. Uh, there is the one that is made with George from Jeff from Tough Knives, I think, is the guy. Uh, it's a it's a tie frame lock with contouring. Could be exactly what you're looking for. Um, and I don't know. You guys in the chat mentioned the other. This model's been used all over the place. Uh, Les Voorhees makes a frame lock with it. So uh, I think it's called the Roar. Uh, Winger can correct me if he's still on. Um so yeah, uh, plenty of ways you can get it, but not from A squared. Uh, at the hospital watching my man. What are you at the hospital for? Oh, sorry. I thought uh, Rich was uh, Ryan because they both have a green R. What's up, Rich? You're still at the hospital, dude. Thanks for joining. Oh my God, congratulations. I'm just going to say it, man, because you haven't really been telling people, but like, I'm super happy for you. My friend Rich had a baby and he's a dope little gangster. I'm so excited. He's the guy that has the um, uh, the whole Blade Works Spectre waiting in his house for him. Uh, Rich, man, you got to send me your address. I'll drive down to your house right now and pick that shit up off your front porch, dude. I will go take that shit right now. Um Let's see what else we got going on. Thanks for joining us, by the way, Rich. Appreciate it. Hope everything is going well, man. That's awesome. Uh, T-shirt idea, yes, yeah, Steve. Steve, did I show you? I think you're the guy that I showed my uh, my um, T-shirt ideas to, right? I'll I'll talk to you guys about that in the future. I want to do some merch, but I know that you know nobody's really interested in like buying the Tovarish Works logo or anything like that. That's not what I'm saying. I don't want to do branded merch. I mean, I might offer it for people that want to buy it, but but. I do have some some basic skills in graphic design and stuff from over the years, and so I've come up with a cool few um, shirt designs, and uh, and they're just they're just knife related. You would never know that they were related to me at all. So I I am interested in selling merch like that. Let me know if you guys are interested in that. Uh, you got a base Holt right or upgraded? It's base. Uh, he wasn't offering the the special versions yet. That damn steel blade that went out to that guy on Instagram was a one of one. Uh, that he convinced him to do, kind of in the same way that like Grimsmo won't do a full time Ascus frame lock unless they do it for you, right? Because some people have pushed them to do that. Um, so it's basic. <clears throat> Excuse me, Stephen. Do you have issues? With USPS lately, you're from Virginia, right? Waiting for mail, which has been delayed for five days. So, yeah, I'm in Virginia as well, obviously. And uh, I've been having mixed things with USPS. I sent a knife out two days ago. First class mail, which is supposed to take three to five days. And that got to the guy's house in two days. He's in New Jersey. Uh, I had this knife sent from... What's up, Throat Scratch? Nice to see you, man. Um, I had the Bushido sent from Florida two days ago. And it made it today. That was priority mail. But then I also have a bunch of other knives that are taking forever. Like I have a knife coming from Blade HQ that I ordered on the, I want to say like the 15th or the 15th, I think, or maybe the 14th. I have to check my email. Uh, and that's not scheduled for delivery till Saturday. It didn't even update tracking for three days. It just said it hadn't been, it hadn't arrived at USPS. And I messaged Blade HQ and they were like, well, we sent it. So 
Um, so that's taking forever. So yeah, definitely weird with USPS right now. Uh, A2 would do full tie scales if you wanted, but don't think they touch frame locks anymore. Yeah, exactly. You could do tie scales, I would think, if you really asked for it. But um, I wouldn't want to see a frame lock from them if it was me anyway. Tashi's Instagram has been showcasing all his collabs. Cool. You guys should go check that out. Tavar is trying to steal some knives tonight, it seems. What's up, Sid? Oh, man. Did you uh, did you scroll back and hear me talking about your, your fucking scout? Because I do want to steal that shit from you. Uh, cool. Everybody's congratulating Rich. That's awesome to see. Uh, ch -ch -ch, you did their dope. I did what? Let me scroll up. Mm, mm -hmm. Good. I'm glad you like the t-shirt ideas. Cool. I'm going to show those to people sometime soon. Um, I already said hey to throat. What's up, dude? Same here in Paris. Knives are not allowed. What? How are you a knife collector and they're not allowed? Um, oh, Paris. Are you the person who asked me recently about getting an A-squared knife in Paris? Uh, Steven. Steve. First class is dog shit. Slow all over right now. Yeah. But again, first class made it in two days up to New Jersey. Very weird. They're like very weird and selective with how all that works. I always do first class now. I'm sorry, guys. Like sometimes uh, when I interact with somebody who doesn't like know who I am and that that's such like a egotistical thing to say, right? People who don't know me, I'm so famous. Uh, but I just mean that like when I, when I interact with somebody who like has never seen my name on Reddit before, even just hanging around, uh, you know, they'll be like, no, like I need you to send a priority, like, like, because it's unsafe to send it first class. And I'm like, you, first of all, you have no fucking idea what you're talking about. That's not true at all. Um, but second of all, like I'm sending knives in and out of this house all day every day which by the way i need to get some security <laughs> in a safe uh but i have fucking knives coming in and out all day so like if i'm sending seven packages out in a single day uh you know to go and spend three dollars and 46 cents per package first class versus seven dollars and 50 cents per package for priority that's a big fucking deal that's half uh so i just send first class in unless somebody specifically asks or unless it's a particularly expensive knife That's brutal about the two-day priority thing slide. I'm sorry. In one Grimsmo video showing off th their brother-in-law's knife, they show full Timascus Norseman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Dino Digger was fucking awesome. That was a great video. Grash of Rich. The whole will be awesome. Oh, yeah, the kid too. I know, right? Rich, uh, he's such a nice guy, man. He, he texted me earlier today, and he was like, hey, you can have my... Uh, my specter for your live stream and i was like don't fucking worry about my live stream man go hang out with your baby <laughs> like he's he's always thinking about other people um sid nah i was talking about you trying to steal rich's specter you can't have my scout oh no i don't that's funny uh yeah no i'm gonna no, i'm not gonna steal it i'm just gonna go get it because he's not at home uh and and uh you know borrow it uh, I know I can't have your scout, but I, ooh, slide. Did you just put your order in like literally on stream? Cause that'd be so sick. Awesome, dude. Congrats. Uh, yeah. Um, Sid, I really want to see your scout in person. That's one of the ones that you got after blade show. So I didn't see it. Uh, I'll see you at blade show this year, right? I actually, I'm very excited this year to be walking around with my 21 slot now pack versus my six slot, because it'll mean that I can essentially bring my entire collection uh, so that'll be fun. I'm really excited about that. That's really cool that you ordered the Holt, man. Tell me more. What else is going on here? We've been live for one, about 45 seconds from an hour now. Pretty cool. I'm really glad you guys joined me for this. It's been a lot of fun. Let's see. Hey, we're up to like 20 people. That's neat. Uh, again, for anybody who wasn't here earlier, big announcement. If you are a Redditor, we did just, uh, open up r slash grail knives. 
which is a new subreddit geared towards super high end knife. Not, I shouldn't have said super. That's not true. It's a subreddit that's just like Knife Club, but a little bit more geared towards higher end stuff. Uh, Knife Club has soared to over 40,000 subscribers uh, over the last year, which has been absolutely delightful to see. It's an amazing growing community, uh, and I'm delighted to be a part of it. But, uh, you know, the vast majority of knife goers don't exactly spend a small fortune on their knives. So some of us found that, uh, you know, it was a little bit difficult to sift through 20,000 spider codes to find one um, interesting knife to look at. So r slash grail knives, go check it out. Go get some conversation started. Post some knives. That way, uh, anybody who just wants to kind of scroll through a little bit of uh, Timascus and, and Damasteel and gorgeous stuff, uh, or in the case of some people like, oops, I hit a parked car, uh, he has an awesome picture of a couple of slip joints, gorgeous stuff. Uh, yeah, for sure. Dope. I'll see you there. I'm trying to go to Blade Show, G10, and New York Custom Knife Show this year. That's the goal. I don't know if I can afford to go all three, but that's the plan. Vextos asks, what knife have you had the longest <laughs> that I technically still own? Um, I don't know. I got to get up and go look. Okay, so technically it's this one, uh, which is like a old boot knife that I had. It's United Cutlery, so it's obviously a uh, total piece of shit. Except it's not, because it was probably made in 2000, so it's uh, still with me. Um, so, like... You guys, I don't really tell this story too frequently, except I actually did just tell it. By the way, uh, we are starting a knife podcast. Super excited. Knifecast. Uh, we recorded the first episode recently with Josh, a.k.a. Echo Does Knives, and Dr. Frunky. Um, so I did mention in that live stream a little bit of my history, which is that when I was younger, I had a Gerber Paraframe 2 that I very much liked, uh, but took it to school first year of a no tolerance policy, got expelled from eighth grade, uh, and had to part ways from knives for quite a few years, uh, just because of that experience. And then sometime when I was like 17, I was at a gun show and I bought like a handful of knives. And that was like, that like kicked off my knife collecting. Uh, and this was one of those knives. Uh, every other knife from there, I think I no longer have, there might be one fixed blade, like big fixed blade that I have laying around some that I do actually, I know for a fact I have it somewhere, but I don't know where it is. Um, but so this would be technically the oldest knife that I still have possession of. Um, so I used to wear 14 eyelet Doc Martens when I was in high school because I thought I was a badass punk kid, not anything like I am today. But, uh, I used to tie this, uh, tie my bootlaces through this and have it on the side of my, um, pants or my boot and uh it is a double-edged boot knife so technically this is the answer to your question um no i never used it in self-defense but it was always fun to have now in terms of like the knives that i still have around that i like that were collector knives oldest one would be the first one technically which would be this uh, Mcusta Riku with 33 layer Damascus over a VG10 core. Um, this knife caught me. Well, I'll just let you guys listen to the uh, the podcast. But uh, this is technically the oldest like quote unquote dress folder that I have. Uh, and then like the Wee Knives 604D was a big one for me. That was kind of the knife that really, really kicked off 
like spending big money. 250 bucks was a big jump from 100 bucks, which is about the most I'd spent prior to this knife. Uh, and then from here it was like 600 and then 900 and then a thousand. Um, whoops, had to step out. Holt is 98 highs, 56 lows, pinstripe satin, satin blade, purple hardware. What? That is awesome, dude. I love that you went with the highs and lows. That's sick. Ren. What's up, dude? I cannot keep track of... Fuck, man. I have so many friends that are like... They have Instagram and YouTube and Reddit. And I email with them. And I text them. And I have their real name in my phone. And I'm like... And they're all different, right? Like, some people... Ha like, I use try to use the same name for everything. But uh, it's funny how many people I'm trying to keep track of, you know, where it's all the same person. Um... Whatever happened to the crazy custom Olamic you teased on Reddit like eight months ago? Can I can I be honest? Like, I sort of had like a one-sided falling out with Olamic, meaning that they have no idea what the fuck I'm talking about. But like, I um, I don't like them as a business right now. They just. I don't want to get into it again. Like I said earlier, I don't want to just sit here and be like negative and bash a maker or something. Eugene is a fantastic human being. I've met him. I've hung out with him. He's friendly. He makes a great knife. He's very fun to like talk with and text with and build a knife. And um, we had, I had a ton of fun working with him. His business that he runs needs work. Uh, the technicians that they've hired, their customer service staff, you know, they're a growing business and they're experiencing growing pains. And um, there's a lot of knives that you can buy out there. Uh, sorry for a blank uh, table, by the way. There's a lot of knives that you can buy out there for, you know, a thousand bucks. And Olamic just really isn't on my list right now. He's been trying to have coffee. Go have coffee with him, dude. He's fucking awesome. AKA probable cause incarnate. What is that related to? What do you mean, Scratch? What are you referencing? Um, you really like the 604 Vextos? Man, this knife really started it all for me, man. Let me. Like. It's uh, the first video that's on the channel. I went off the deep end off that, after that one. I didn't even know that I wanted to... I didn't even want to be a reviewer. Uh, right? And I still really don't. But, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that video I was like, oh, look at this knife. It's like a Shirogorov. I had never held a Shirogorov before. Lessons learned, right? Um, it is very smooth. Yeah, the prices get crazy too fast. Prices for what? Like the the Alamic or like customs in general, prices are insane. You're right. No idea how to use Reddit. Haven't been able to for one reason or another. Officially is literally three minutes. Oh, haven't been able to go have coffee with Eugene for one reason or another. Office is literally three minutes away from mine. That's really cool. You should go hang out with him. <sighs> Which X Green Masson? Because Tony Meter has the green machine that they call it, um, which is the uh, the one with the acrylic, the green and black acrylic. I think you probably have the front flipper. The Olamic prices, like so, the Busker, for example, is outrageous. Like the fact that. The fact that you can spend like seven hundred and fifty dollars on a busker blows my fucking mind. Um, and like, I, I don't know, are they like still offering customs? Like, I don't know how their business works. Like, I don't know if I can um, uh, go like buy the custom Olamic compact that I that I wanted, which I would still like to have that knife, but not enough. 
Maybe. That knife was cool. I like designing that knife. A lot of somebody told me that it looked like a like a fucking mess. Um somebody like really didn't like what I built. I don't remember who. It was like a friend. It was all in good fun, but they were like, dude, that's ugly as shit. Uh I think it's cool. I want it. What else we got going on, guys? I'm like pretty thirsty and running out of water. Again, super pumped about this mini Bushido. So for you guys who uh, joined a little bit later, that was indeed the knife that I unboxed. <clears throat> and I'm so freaking happy with it. Charlie Chen. Your boot dagger, LOL. I know, right? It's like, I was such a dork. Um, so yeah, this is the mini Bushido that I unboxed earlier super sick timascus clip floating timascus backspacer excuse me gorgeous polished damascus hollow grind tonto we do have the um contoured pivot can't even feel it and a pretty Decent action, if I do say so myself. And some of the best acoustics that I've ever heard on a closing knife. Super thick. I love it. I love it. About to put in my Holt pre-order. Ben, do it. Later, Throat Scratch. Thanks for joining us, man. Ben, you said something earlier. Let me scroll up. What color did you go for on your Holt? Um, I did... Um, Kind of a not very Tavarish Works thing to do. I got a plain titanium frame lock with the satin finish. Uh, and then I got all purple hardware. So purple satin clip, purple six spoke pivot, purple screws. And then I got the near mirror finish for the blade, which is basically a mirrored stone wash. I've been toying with the idea on the whole. Guess I'm going to cave before they fill up again. He's got 60 knives. I don't know, um, Josh. I really wish Rich had gotten to pull his out. Go ahead and order it. You know what I mean? The guy that uh, you sold me that carbon fiber. Yeah, I know. I re Steve, that was like, man, that was like really early into uh, See you, St. Jude. Uh, Ren, <laughs> thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Uh, yeah, Steve, that was like a very early knife for me in terms of the the big boy stuff playing with colored hardware is sexy that's kind of how i feel about it my problem was my problem was that like i keep ordering custom knives or like sending knives out to get modified and i always think i know what i want in terms of anodization anodizing uh and it never comes out the way that i want it uh, this kind of goes into a bigger thing that I'm going to do. Uh, I'm probably going to make a video on or something where I just talk about the fact that, like, I don't really want to order custom knives anymore. I, I don't. It's so stressful, um, and it, nothing's ever quite the way that you want it uh, in terms of colors or everything. Like, even this knife, you know what I mean? Like, I didn't tell him what I wanted for the clip. He already had these made, but, like, I don't want the orange in this clip. Like, I'm going to have to do something about it. So, um, it's just very interesting. Uh I just don't really like enjoy ordering customs because the colors just aren't just things aren't right. Uh, and so the idea of being able to buy a knife off a table that I've already like I get to see it in real in person and play with it and stuff um, is way better. And then uh, even buying from a dealer and kind of having the option of returning the knife with a restocking fee uh, is is sufficient. Um, but uh, that's why I went with the plain blade. Because even though he did a great job of providing pictures, by he I mean Angie, his wife, uh, Angie Holt, she, uh, they provide like pictures of all the the scales, like pre anodized with all of the voltages, and so you can like pick exactly what you want. But the thing is, the lighting in the room that they did it in isn't perfect, and your computer monitor has a different color profile than my computer monitor, and so like we're not seeing the real color, right? When you're talking about on such a small scale of like this 
hue versus this almost nearly identical hue. When when you're trying to pick between those two things, uh, there's nothing like looking at it in real light and getting to move it and stuff and see how light plays off of it because all of these materials ha play with light differently. Um, so that's kind of why I just went safe and just said, give me just the plain one. <sighs> yeah, I know I can sell it. And honestly, I kind of want to go big now um now that like people are like oh yeah it's good and i haven't got mine yet but um what i'd like to do is get the starburst handle instead of the pinstripe and do that with a high low anod anodizing um like maybe like some magenta in the valleys with with a with a light blue on the peaks that'd be sick <sighs> um try to stay low key most of the time i'm usually happy i don't the brown servo I got, I went with a high voltage champagne and it's great. Not my choice because that's basically bronze, but I get it. Dope. Um, nice see first hand right. White balance. Do you have a calibration device? Do I? No, I, I don't. I do all of my white balance in post. So I just work with daylight bulbs. I actually have a video. Um, if anybody here like is into taking pictures and making videos and stuff and you want to like know about my setup, I made a private video. It's like 20 minutes long, literally covering everything that I use uh, and all of my methods. Um, and I made that for a few people that were interested. I'm happy to share that with you. It's, it's unlisted. Um, so I, yeah, I work with all daylight bulbs. They're all white light. Uh, and then I just, if there's extra blue coming through, um, then I just use a uh, post on my monitor. Uh, I don't know. I My monitor is set up for what I use it for. I wouldn't want to fuck with it just to see somebody's um, anodizing colors. I think I'm going to go for that iridescent blue at 80 volts. I don't know. Let me check it out, man. What's 80 volts look like? Bleh, hold blade works. <laughs> anodizing colors 80 volts 80 80 80 volts ah what a pretty color it's like right as it transitions from from purple at 79 volts to almost fully blue at 81 uh, and definitely 82 volts i really like that very cool and i particularly like it how they have it on this starburst one on the picture very dope see like i want that now i want that can i have that where did chat go uh oh i'm losing you guys where did you go okay um the delay is funny yeah no kidding Sorry, someone already picking up my mail. Free specters for everyone. Dude, I'll fight that person. No, what I had meant was a lot of people take photos and the white balance is off. I have a color calibration device on my monitor half for decades. Constantly checks ambient conditions. Got it. Yeah, right. You're, that's, right. That's the problem. Like my vector, basically. Uh, what's your vector look like? Yours is the oh yeah the that iridescent blue right correct yeah super cool color, um, only helps with your own work though right, uh, it's on their Instagram look at the video, ah oh, no I just looked at the e I don't know if you, if you just ordered you haven't gotten your email yet they're gonna send you an email that has a Google Doc, uh or Google folder with literally photographs of all the different voltages it's fucking cool, or maybe they have that on their website and that's where you saw it too I don't know. That 80 volt that he did was fantastic. Blurple, yep. That vector color is what mine is going to be. Sick. Sounds like you guys are all making me super jealous um, in terms of your color choices. Damn, am I happy with this Bushido. I really wish the clip was the right colors. He's got it all perfect, like all through here and then right at the top. He just uh, went a little bit low heat for me. 
very smooth. A little bit tough at the very end here, but that sound that it makes. Charlie, you want to talk about acoustics, man. When this knife, cl like, cl clicks into the detent. Whew. Man, that is clean. I cannot wait to take pictures of this thing. It's going to be sick. All right, guys. Um, mine is a green color, but it leans towards black bronze. Yeah. The video on their Instagram really shows off that 80 volts. It changes based on the viewing angle 100%. That's the thing that you get a lot with those higher voltage colors, um, especially when uh, there's peaks and valleys to the finishing and the milling. Um, just the way the solution gets in there and everything, uh, it always comes out with a very cool look. That's a big thing with Reich knives. They always, oop, they always have uh, like little hash mark millings going through them, and they always get this really cool two tone anodizing. The video, oh, funny that makers have to think about the sound of their knives. Gavsco, Gavcos, you can tell blindfolded. No kidding. Um, I really like that about Gavco Customs. Um, Thorburns have really great acoustics as well. I really like this fucking Bushido. I'm so happy. I was so nervous. High voltage also doesn't fingerprint as easily. You are 100% correct. The problem with these low voltage colors, particularly like a low voltage blue or a low voltage purple, is that uh, when you get these fingerprints on them, the oils actually change the colors that you start to see. So not only does it get really foggy, um, sometimes you'll see like bronze come through on a blue uh, and lots of blues come through on a purple sort of whatever the lower voltage is compared to the voltage that you're at it starts to kind of like fade backwards. It's weird Yeah, high voltage definitely takes skill. I really like this super high voltage magenta that I have on my a6 uh, Mini which was done aftermarket by Ty spectrum uh, the green liners which are on my mini Tribeca uh, that is on the way back from spa treatment are Probably the best liners I've ever experienced in my life, let alone on a knife that I own. Um, that's the reason I bought the knife was because they're the best liners I've ever seen. Uh, and then the Latteris that I got, we did a super high voltage magenta, kind of like this as well. So we'll see how that turned out. People like it because it's so heavily oxidized. Which color? Yeah. Uh, okay, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and hop off. We are at 1 hour 22 minutes. And I would honestly like to keep hanging out. And I have the time. But... I can't talk anymore. My voice is fucking killing me. Um, so, unfortunately, I'm just going to have to end it there. Thank you so much, guys, for joining. This was awesome. What a boatload of fun. I definitely plan on doing this again as soon as my Laredos come in. They come in on Saturday. I'm off on Saturday. Uh, so, don't be surprised if, just like today, you sort of see at, like, 4 or 5 p.m., once I get the knives and know for a fact that, that I have them in the mail, um, that... Uh, you know, I'll probably go live same time. Uh, we'll do an unboxing there. We'll do an unboxing of the, the Spectre. It's going to be such a blast. Um, so, yeah, thanks a lot, guys, for joining me on this one. Really appreciate it, and I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, definitely let me know what you liked and didn't like about this live stream so I can continue to improve on ones in the future. Obviously, email me at tovarishworks at gmail.com if you ever want to chat, um, and check me out on Instagram at tovarishworks. Thanks so much, guys, and I'll see you next time. And also, I don't know how to fucking end the stream. Ah, figured it out. Now I'll see you next time.